Well, we just spent $60,000. There she is. Holy mackerel, look at this boat. So how exactly does one make the decision to buy a sailboat, you ask? It goes a little something like this. Take a trip to the British Virgin Islands, sail on a 36-foot catamaran for two weeks, fall in love with the idea of living on a boat, watch a bunch of YouTube channels that are making this life a reality, and then come up with a plan of our own. The plan. Learn how to sail, have a family, buy a boat, move on to said boat, and live happily ever after. Reality is... Things don't always go as planned. Let's just say our timeline is to splash in 2025. Colin and I made the nearly 16 hour drive from Thunder Bay to Stony Creek, Ontario to look at the boat on September 9th, 2022. Who's Colin? Well, let me introduce the main characters of our story. When I say character, Colin is certainly a character. Mm. Colin, how is your pickle? <laughs> what in the <laughs> fuck? I'm still on fire. I ate an entire platter with albinos. Oh, and Colin has one and he's crying. <laughs> Every boat needs a Colin, savor of boats, and my sanity as far as being able to accomplish things on the boat properly. Retired from many years of manual labor, teller of a good joke, and a man who prefers the iron wind over a stick boat. But we won't hold that against him. Meet Murray, mechanical engineer by trade, solver of abstract and complex problems with the never-ending honey-do list and a heart of gold. Because let's face it, it takes a very special person to put up with me. He's also the best dad and co-parent I know to our two daughters, Eve and Pearl. Meet Eve, our little unicorn, the first girl on the Guinness side in 35 years, sweet by nature, smart as a whip, artist and creative thinker, can tell when someone needs a hug, protector of her little sister, and the one who made us parents. Oh, I let go. You got any keys? Meet Pearl, defender of her big sister, gives as good as she gets when playing with the boys, silly by nature, highly intelligent, energetic, funny, and a free thinker. Miss Independent and the one who will cause me gray hairs. And I'm Heather, farm girl by nature, photographer by heart, but not by trade. Raised on the prairies, far from any body of water, I do everything backwards. I can be handy when I'm not taking care of our two kids. Halloween costume master, lover of designing spaces, stubborn as a mule. But then again, isn't that the trademark of any good sailor? Okay, so now on to how we ended up with a boat. The pandemic provided a lot of time for daydreaming and boat shopping. One night, while doing my usual scrolling through Yacht World, Marketplace, and Kijiji, I came across this project boat. It wasn't really what we had in mind. First, it was a monohull. We had planned a catamaran. Second, we weren't looking for another project. As things go with us though, it's really hard not to look at a good project. The boat is a 43-foot Bruce Roberts Meridius, 48 with the bowsprit, and has never been in the water. There she is. Holy mackerel, look at this boat. She's huge. He's a big boat. Well, come on in. Careful when you come up. Stepping on board was overwhelming. There was literally stuff everywhere and more in a 40 foot shipping container. But we took a look around, talked about what had been done and what was left to get her in the water. Of, of the finishing. Like you can see the woodworking here, but this is all, everything's been plugged, finished. And the ceiling is all done, all the cabinets are all done. We consulted friends who owned sailboats, fixed sailboats, and one whom had completed a similar project but with a 50-foot steel hull sailboat. The following morning we negotiated over the phone from our hotel room. Well, 
we just spent sixty thousand uh, dollars to buy our project boat so uh, this is this morning we're leaving Burlington Colin and I stayed at the town place suites and we're just gonna go pick up the dinghy so uh, it's out no and sound so be a nice ride home on the way we stopped at a roadside farmers market to pick up some fresh fruits and vegetables to snack on for the ride home after meeting a little friend, we gave our deposit, took a short walk to retrieve our new to us dinghy, and hit the road back home. The excitement of the trip gave me the energy to drive through the night to be home in the morning for my girls. We agreed to either remove the boat or pay to store it by November 15, 2022. Little did we know moving the boat would be such a difficult thing to do. The boat is nearly 15 feet wide, 14.8 on the beam, and moving her would require not only oversized load permits and a pilot vehicle, but both possible highways had construction on them. The South Highway needed four bridges to be completed in order to take the boat that way, and the North Highway had wide load restrictions until the end of January 2023. Not knowing when we would be able to move the boat herself, Colin and I made a second trip down in the motorhome in November to pack up the boat and haul back as much boat stuff as we could fit in a 20 foot sea can on our 30 foot flat deck. After picking up our shipping container, we made a quick stop at Noah's Marine. And if you're looking for a new location, Noah's, you should move to Thunder Bay. Colin and I worked from sunup to sundown, breaking only to eat whatever fast food was nearby. Neither one of us rested, aside from when we crashed at the end of the day from exhaustion. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I got up at five and re gassed up the generator we're staying in the camper there it's not too bad we've got a furnace it's great anyway let's go to the boat this is all the stuff you gotta pack here yeah well tons and tons and tons and tons at that i should probably go help call and pack up the final day we spent in stony creek we locked the boat made our final payments and loaded the stairs onto the trailer in the dark pulling out at 7 30 at night we aimed to make it to the other side of Toronto before we settled down for the night. Around 10.30 p.m. we had made it to Barrie and found a lot we could park in, grab a bite, and then settle our heads until morning. It was raining and eventually turned to snow. Waking up the next morning there was a thick layer of heavy snow covering everything. Lovely morning. Good morning, Barrie. A quick stop at the Golden Arches for breakfast, we fueled up and began the 22-hour trek that varied between crazy drivers and white-knuckle conditions. At one point, we had pulled into Wawa hoping to fill up with gas, only to find out that the gas station closed at 9pm, not 10, and it was 9.05. I nearly cried tears of joy when we pulled into White River and saw the 24-hour gas station was open. Pulling into Thunder Bay after driving 22 hours, I parked old Betsy the motorhome and thanked her for keeping us safe and staying on the road. Little did I know, it would still be a couple months before the big sailboat finally arrived home. First of all, this is the first video I've taken on this thing. Uh, we just arrived at the boat. I did a very good bad job of taking pictures. I want to see this thing first. Really? Ha. Ha. Oh my god. Can you bring up that lamp, that light for me? Now, one thing you need to understand about this boat is that we are the third owners. Is it cursed? 
Well, the story goes that the first owner commissioned the hull from a sailboat building school, had it hauled to Journey's End Marina, and however long afterwards, passed away. I know, right? Hiring that marina in hindsight feels like you're challenging the universe. His family didn't want the boat, and eventually sold it to Rick Suttle, who then hired a boat mover to bring the boat to his daughter-in-law's property in Stony Creek. There she sat for 12 years, nine of which she was worked on. Rick underwent spinal surgery, knee surgery, and unfortunately, his very beautiful wife Marilyn was diagnosed with terminal cancer. After learning she had six months to two years to live, the boat dream obviously ended and she was listed for sale. Through the years, Rick had collected a monumental amount of stuff that went with the boat, including appliances, the ship's wheel, bell, winches, sails, a retired racing sailboat life raft, and now obsolete electronics. So for the sake of this vessel and our family, I really hope that the third owner is the charm. Huh. That's the heaviest spot. Right? That's pretty much that where the motor that right there in the middle? The motor wasn't in when they lifted it the first time. Okay, but we're okay. So uh the motor is right where the center cockpit is, which is right where that is, yeah. Okay, so then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, we'll put a roughly yeah. Yeah, it works. Ah! <laughs> uh, he was a little further forward, but yeah, um, he kind of wrapped around the front, one of these guys here. Uh, but he... Yeah. Right about... Yeah, right about there. Yeah. I would come back. I would come back from there. Uh, the engine wasn't in when they put it in. The engine sits right here. Oh, so we got go to go come back. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got big mitts. Snowmobilers. Yeah, I think so. Because they didn't have the engine, yeah. Are you being rigger today? <laughs> A little bit of everything. Experience. You're, uh, we think we'll just be able to lift it up, drive the truck under, and just set her down? Yeah. Yeah, all the blocks and stuff will come out of the way. <laughs> yeah. What are we rated for if we're a little over the 20,000? Yeah. 10,200 kgs and 30% on the front. So 10,000, so it's a year for 22,000 on the deck plus the front and extra. Five, yeah. six grand, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's a normal of 25,000, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 38,000 pound axles there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eight and eight. 24, yeah. You know, we don't know what we set for them. 
Yeah, let's say he says he's got a gauge, so we'll know exactly, but. Hey, what's happening? Not yet. Yeah, Farron fair and called one guy that uh, said he wants to buy the trailer. Um, but he'd take his trailer a a or a exchange, so he's gonna he's calling a couple other people to try and figure that out. Um, I, we set the boat back down. She's safe. She slid a little funny on us a little bit. And I was scared, but yeah, but we were we were able to get the nose because it was nose heavy. So we moved the straps. We lifted it again. That's when we got the full weight of the thing, but then it was still nose heavy. So when we go, we're going to lift it the next time, it's going to move again. Um, we'll move the straps forward a bit. And, but, oh well, yeah, he's right here. Yeah. Next time on Guinness on the Go. After a failed lift, Farron finds a trailer. The boat finally makes her way home and we take a long overdue winter vacation.